Hello, today we are going to make a table mat. I hope you find this fun. The first thing to do is to lay out your table with a towel and some bubble wrap with the bubbles facing uppermost. This will give you some friction under the wool and will help the wool to bind together. And get your materials together. You will need some merino wool and some embellishments, bits of silk and yarns for decoration, various different colours. Always good to get a colour combination. I've used a dark purple, a very light lilac colour and then some nice individual sort of mauve um, and then pinkish sort of fuchsia coloured silks. If you are using wools, make sure they're 100% wool as they will combine together. Apologies that the voiceover is not my, my actual voice. My original recording didn't go too well, so I voiced over the top. Um, various bits of silk that you're going to use can be cut and chipped over your work. You'll see later when I put the design out. Hopefully you'll find this fun. Now we're going to start laying out our design on the top of our bubble wrap. Move your wool and keep it dry separately. Um, basically just fluff your wool up and try and get it to be slightly loose, um, the merino. Um, just sort of fluff the ends out so that you can just pull it pull it out. If you've never done wet felting at all before, you might want to look at one of my other wet felting videos, which will show you how to um, shingle the wool, um, which is just basically pulling it out in very small amounts from the end of your fingers. I'm just cutting it to make it a straight edge there. Um, and then I'm just going to separate the edges and then start to put it out. The pattern I'm going to use is a cloud pattern and I'm going to put it in a circle. You shingle it very, very um, thinly and keep going around in the circle of your table mat. Um, you're overlapping the, the fibres as you go around. Um, it doesn't matter if the ends are slightly different sort of lengths because you're going to be doing another circle in a minute and overlapping those around. Um, I'm sorry if the video is slow, but for those who are, are quite new to felting, I wanted them to be able to see all the individual stages carefully so that they could actually copy this and do a proper, uh, a proper layout. I'm just covering over the middle of the circle um, after doing the circumference. You can get several layers sort of across there. It's very thin, so it's not going to be too thick and heavy. I um, still have a nice drape to it. And then we're going to go and start on a second layer on the outside, making it slightly wider. And you overlap half on the existing perimeter and half out over the edge. So you're constantly doubling over the wool. The wool, when you start to wet and soap it later on, well then the scales will start to join together and intermingle and hold the wool together, which is the art of felting. Um, we're going to use some warm water and soap like later on. The layout's important. Um, if you don't get the design right, then you're only going to um, regret it later. I'm putting the darkest colour on the background, so this will be what you see on the back of the table mat. And this will also feed through onto the top because I'm going to put some of the um, next colours there. Right, I just had to get a little bit more wool um, because I ran out. I underestimated how much I would need. I think all in all you should be able to manage with about 15 grams of um, wool overall, but trial and error depending on how big your, your circle will eventually come. I'm going to be making a circle initially that's 50 by 50 centimetres um, with two layers of the darker colour and one layer of the top colour and then the various bits and pieces to make the um, embellishment design on the top. Continue on until you've got a good first layer on, the, on your project and then you can gently um, pat this down, pushing any air, you'll see me do this in a minute, just pushing any air out of the project. I'm going to just measure it, but um, I think I've got 44 at this point, and then I'm just sort of making another sort of six or seven centimetres with the, the final colour that overlaps on the outside. 
So I decided to use the strongest colours at the back and graduate into the lightest colours on the top. Um, this will give you the most pleasing effect. Again, just fluffing out the edge of the wool in order to get a nice thin uh, wisp to come across and overlapping again on the very outside. There you go. If you find it very difficult to shingle in your hand like this, there is another method where you hold it on the table and pull it out. Um, I don't find that as, as easy, but my method um, is one that you see lots and lots of people using. Um, as I said in one of my other videos, with a three part how to make a wet felty picture, it shows you in the first sort of four to five minutes a lot more about how to um, pull out the wisps for your project. And certainly you, you want to make a little trial square wet felting when you first start before you start a project like this. Don't do this as a beginner's project. Get a little bit of practice on some square swatches of just general felting just before you actually launch into something. Otherwise you'll waste quite a lot of wool um, in the process sort of trying to do this. That gives us a nice outside edge. Um, and then I'm going to cover that a little bit more. Again, patting it down, trying to keep the air out of it. The water later on will take the air out of it, but um, at the moment, continue um, shingling out. This takes a little bit of time. It's still definitely worth investing the effort to get it right. You do not want too thick um, pieces. You don't want to clump the felt. You want it to be built up of various thin layers that will basically shift together sideways when you're rolling it later and when you're using the electric sander, which I'm going to show you that method as well. Um, you just need to make sure that the fibres can interlock. So this is very much overlapping. And hopefully we'll be there soon. Thank you very much for your patience. Um, some of my other videos are speeded up, but then I have had complaints that people say it's too fast. Right, so we got to the bottom of that layer. Now doing the next lighter colour. That looks nice. It's a very nice highlight to it. It's a really, really kind of pale mauve. Um, you can get coloured packs with um, various different colour themes if you go to World of Wool online where I buy all my wool. Um, you can certainly get um, colour packs so you get themes that blend together um, or just make them up from whatever you have. Um, sometimes crazy colours are even best. I was trying to get like a feeling of a sort of a, a flower petal look to it or a sort of sunburst feel in the mauve so I wanted them to complement the, the shape so I wanted it to come out from the edge. Um, now what I'm doing now is cutting up some of the little bits of silk that I had. This was an sort of offcut from a, a scarf I made and I had to trim down the edge. Um, all I've done there is just ruffle it up small and then I'm just going to chip chop a bit of the silk into just by cutting off very fine bits and letting it fall randomly under the project. Um, I was struggling here a little bit. My scissors weren't quite sharp enough I think. I'm just pulling at some of it to, to break it and just mingling it over the top. You'll see the effect in a little little while, a little more than that. I think I um I think I needed to switch to a, a different pair of scissors, which is exactly what I'm doing now. My black scissors aren't my sharpest, my blue ones are much better. Aha, should have started like that straight away. Um it's quite interesting when you do a voiceover on a video after you've done it, you don't talk the same as you do when you're actually producing it and you, you're you more critical of yourself as well. Um, definitely need to speed these things up a little bit, I think. That's like a little bit tedious. But then again, it's it's probably only about 30, 30 minutes or so and it's certainly um, worth it if you want to learn quickly how to, to do something and have a go yourself. Still finding it difficult to chop this silk up but you can see it is it is getting there. Um, it won't be too more painful for too much longer. 
you're able to fast forward if you like. <laughs> if you are enjoying this video, even though it's a, at a slow pace, um, please subscribe to my channel. Um, I've only really, I've had my channel going for three or four years, but I've only really been interested in adding videos to it in the last six months. Um, one, because I've got um, fibre um, upload now to my little cottage and the speed is faster. It was quite painful before. Um, and the other is that um, I finally got my, my studio to work in back after two years of building work in our house because we had a leak and basically all the floors had to come up and all be relayed and a new extension on the back. Um, so now finally got to having my own space again. You can see now I'm putting some yarn. This is 100% wool yarn and I'm spiralling it on the outside um, over the top of the centre. So it looks a bit, bit like the centre you get on like a poppy flower or something. Um, just And I'm getting a lighter colour. So I've got the darker colour spiral and the lighter coloured. You can't see the difference at the moment, but once these all get wet and then dried out, you'll see that the colours will pop and look definitely, definitely better. Now, once you've actually put the um, yarn all the way around, you do need to cover it with a few little thin fibres to hold the yarn into the rest of the fibre underneath. Um, as I said, please check yarns because you get a lot of them which are um, acrylic um, or polyester blends now for knitting. And really the 100% the wool ones are your best, or at least 80% wool. It'll probably work with an 80% wool, um, wool yarn that will felt. Um, worst case, it doesn't felt, you pull that bit off your design towards the end. Remember, you can always adapt as you go along. Um, it's your design for you, it doesn't have to be perfect. There we go, I've got my sort of centre. Make sure your fingers are, are, are very dry when you're doing this, don't get um, any water on your hands, you'll be getting plenty of water later. Um, and I'm just putting some, this is um, Vicos, now this is very very thin, it's kind of a very bright fuchsia pink. What happens with the Vicos when it dries is that it will um, it will basically shine. Um, so once you've finished the work and it's dried, not when it's finished and it's wet at the end, when it's finished and dried, the, these will sparkle, they, they will shine up um, and look very, very silky. Um, some spacing those around. Try to not overlap completely because I want all the different colours now to start showing through each other. Um, so you don't want to make it solid. Also, Vicos is very fiddly. It wants to stick to your hands as you're, you're putting it down. It's very uh, electric, um, static. So you have to um, just, if, if necessary, you just rub your fingers together and then wipe them on a clean cloth and you'll, you'll lose the static in your hands to, to touch the wall. And then this is another little bit of a different, slightly coloured um, sari silk waist that I had. This is basically very, very thin silk fibres, and I'm just cutting off the end of it um, just to dribble uh, over the design across the top, um, and that will look really, really good when it's finished. Um, those look really, really shiny. You'll see it, and you can certainly have a look at the original photo on the beginning of the video to see how this is, um, this is coming out when it's nice and dry. Be arty. Have fun. You can also use pre felts. You can cut out some shapes. I haven't used them in this particular design, but I have used them in others I've done in the past. You get some pre felted wool, cut the shapes out, and lay them on the top, and those will felt in as well. Right, I'm taking a very thin bit of one of my colours of wool now, and I'm just laying it over the top of these small embellishments, just so the fibres are very much like a cobweb across the top. You won't see them very much, but it will help to hold it and tack it. Think of it as a sort of final layer of um, fibre which is gluing the design together and the, the wool will pull itself through to the wool underneath and hold it all together. Yet the scales on the wool, if you if you look at um, wool in a mic in a magnifying glass, you'll see hundreds and hundreds. It's like the, a very um, sticky insect's leg etc with loads and loads of uh, fibre sticking out and they entwine together to to gnash together to make a fabric when you've finished. There we go, last few bits of that. 
almost finished on the layout and then then so you've got three distinct stages the layout the felting where you get all the wool soaked together and you agitate it to felt it all um, into one piece of material and then the fulling which basically continues similar processes but it helps to shrink the wool slightly and bind it tighter and make your felt more robust so the next process that we will be going on to in a few minutes when I finish putting a few more little bits of um, final curly locks now curly locks they, they are wool they're the original sheep's wool dyed to various colors they haven't been dragged out to to make long merino and um, they've just been left in the, the sheep sort of curly wool so you get a wiggly shape to them um, and they hold that shape and I put a few of those over the very top and they will actually adhere to the final um, pieces of fibre. You, they're very difficult to, to pull apart um, and sometimes you pull them apart they stretch out and straighten. You need to um, just keep at it. Um, try when, when you find the, the curly locks you go from the tip that is very tightly together and pull apart from that end and that will help to keep them in a slightly curly shape. If they do lose their curl, you can quickly wrap them around a pencil and then pull them off the end of a pencil and that put the curls back into it um, and reshape them. Um, I'm just pulling them because I just want them to be reasonably wispy with a little curly ends to it so it doesn't really matter too much. Um, you, you need very few of these so if you buy a packet of curly locks um, that last you for ages and ages on your different embellishments but they are the more expensive thing to put on they are a lot more expensive to buy um, right there's our design finished now the next process is to wet out and I have some hot water here with some ordinary dish soap fairy liquid in it and I'm using my um, wetting out tool you can just use a bottle um, just with any little holes poked in the top, you know, a water bottle, and use it as a shaker. Um, you don't have to go to the expense of buying one of these um, dribble bottles. In fact, sometimes they can actually get too much soap in them. Um, some people wet out originally with, without the soap in it. Possibly you, you can then just add your soap afterwards um, through some softness. Now I was trying to just pat this down, realising my hands were going to stick. Um, so we need to pat it down to force the water through it to take out the air in the wool. Um, I'm putting some very thin built plastic that you just use to cover up your various bits um, to squidge out the wool and the water. As you can see I'm putting my hand flat over it. Be very gentle at this point because otherwise you'll move the things in your design. Um, you actually want to, to keep all the wool in, in in place you don't want to drag it across each other um, so I'm just squidging out making sure that the water I put in the project now is gone and then I'm just going to peel that back um, pull off the edges the wispy bit and just gently pull it away it's very very thin plastic you can do this with another piece of bubble wrap if you need to um, if you haven't got any builders plastic um, there we go and I'm just going to um, put a piece of netting over the top now which will allow me to put more water on it while it's flat um, because the netting's got holes this is just like an old net curtain or some gauze um, you can get this kind of netting a good place for supplies is heidifeathers.co.uk um, they do various um, supplies for wet felting later on in the video I'll put the various details on the bottom um, good job I took the original audio track off of this because as I was banging my hands down making some uh, bangs where my camera was set up. Um, then I'm also just squashing the water in using a flat sponge um, and this is just so I can squidge a little bit more water in. It's also useful if you over water it you can squeeze and get water out. Um, we're just going over the whole design now pushing extra water you can see from the bowl into it with the soap you need to get all the air between the fibres out before they will actually gel together and start hatching on to each other. Right, and then I have a round um, little moolie. This is um, a felting tool that you can buy. If not, you can just use your hands to rub um, or you can 
take a ball of um, the bubble wrap and just scrunch it up with the bubbles pointing outwards and use it as a little tool. Um, so if you don't want the expense, then that is olive oil soap, which I'm using. I'm just wetting it and rubbing it into the work. The more soap and the more hot water will help the friction. And you can see it in circles here, moving the soap around. You need to get a lot of friction into this piece. Um, it's very thin, but it should felt reasonably quickly. You'll see that um, I'm going to pull away the gauze now. The, the issue with the gauze as you're doing it, sometimes it will felt into the wool itself, so you do need to pull it away and separate it from time to time, um, just to make sure it's only the work underneath that's felting and not into the, uh, the piece over the top. You can see I just gently, gently brush it away and down. When it's wet, it holds together reasonably firmly, but certainly don't pick your work up at this stage. It's not together enough as one piece of material and it will fall apart in your hands. Um, I'm just checking that the design is still in place and no bits and pieces have fallen out or got stuck to the gauze. Um, and I'm going to put my plastic back down on top of it so that I can rub a little bit more forcefully um, and that it won't stick. See, just smoothing it over, get rid of the bubbles and just smooth it out uh, using the moule. But the moule was sticking a little bit here, so just needed to flatten it out if there's a bubble. I call it a moule, I don't know why, it's just a felting tool, but it's a circular one. Um, I'm putting a little bit of soap on top of the polythene, so as I rub my hands, across it my hands will actually slide across the polythene making it slightly wet and then that's slightly easier to move my tool around sticking a little bit you can see there a bit more soap it gives it a sliding motion and then I can keep felting in in a moment, I'm going to show you how I do it with an electric sander as well, but you don't need an electric sander. It will just quicken the process. You can continue doing this to, to felt the work and rubbing the work to actually get it um, to felt together. I'm going to use the sander shortly just to quicken the process up. And I won't do a voiceover to it. I'm going to um, just speed it up so that you can see what it's the, the process. There are lots of um, videos on YouTube of how to use a sander for felting. A um, very good one is Lena Archibald. Um, I'll put her details at the bottom. She's got a brilliant one of how to use a sander for wet felting. So go and have a look at her websites as well. Really, it's just getting friction and agitation into the wool. I'm fanning it out because I want it to, to stay in my pattern. Don't want it to bubble up or get any creases underneath. I'm going to pull that away. After a while, when you've been doing wet felting, you get a, a feel for what you need to, to do and how many times you need to rub the project. Just pulling away the wisps, starting to get together as one piece of fabric, but still quite fragile. Um, you can still see the design there laid out. As I mentioned before, here's a very quick demonstration for using an electric sander. It's been slightly speeded up. Um, I'm not going to go into the full how to do here, but it can reduce the amount of rubbing that you've got to do in a project. So it's certainly worth investing in in the future. Now we have the piece back with the net over it, and I'm going to continue rubbing by hand, um, which is the traditional way of making felt. So I'm putting quite a lot of olive oil soap in it again through the gauze um, in order to give it a lot of friction. And I'm going to continue using my moule tool. You do have to rub for quite a while to get the actual fibres to, to gel together. Um, but you shouldn't take um, too long, probably 30 minutes at the most, um, possibly 20 if you're quite firm. Um, and you'll be able to do a little test at the end called the pinch test which is when you pull off the netting and you pinch the fibre and just see whether it will pull away or whether it will hold itself together, um, which will give you the idea. And you'll see me 
and doing that shortly. At the moment I'm getting plenty of extra soap into it. I'm pulling away the gauze again now, seeing how the project is holding together in a second. Give it a few more rubs and then we'll be able to see um, how the material is, is becoming a piece of material rather than a load of individual strands of wool. You can see get lots of soap going on so your hands are very soft at the end of this. Um, if you do have problems with interaction with soap um, you can just use ordinary dish soap, you don't need olive oil um, soap but I, I find it makes the wool feel good now. You can see what I'm doing now, this is called palming this is getting my hand underneath the wool, that's lifting it gently up from the bubble wrap and palming it in between my other hand. Um, this just helps to pull it together on both sides and it also gives me a chance to feel the work to see if it's holding together as a piece of material which it is definitely um, coming into here. So it'll also shrink it slightly into the edges which is what I want to do just to pull the um, the wiggly edge together. I wasn't trying to make a perfect circle here I'm quite happy to have a, a floating edge. And I'm going to turn it over here and just give it a bit of a, a rub from the other side with my hands over the top directly onto the wall because it's starting to firm together now it doesn't need the gauze or anything to to hold it together while I'm rubbing. I'm able to get some motion into it and I can start to feel that it's a piece of material rather than uh, a collection of wool fibres. So we're almost at the end of the second stage which is the felting stage which is where we're making it into a piece of felt. I'm going to just wipe my hands here a little bit. You do need a few extra tea towels and things around. Turning that over to the front side again. You'll notice none of the embellishments are coming off now. They seem well stuck down into the body of the work and you're starting to see the design coming through. And I'm pinching the wall there, just pinching it up seeing if it will pull away. And it's quite firm so I think that's probably well stuck and well entangled and well felted together. Just rubbing my hand gently over to see if there's any areas of loose fibre. Be able to feel them come away in your hands if there are. The felting by sander definitely speeds up the process because it vibrates the wool very quickly at high speed. But you don't need it. You don't need to buy a sander to do felting. Um, but you will do if you get addicted as I have. So it does speed it up and make it a little bit less cumbersome. Just rubbing in the direction now of the edge just to try and move the fibres out just a little bit more. It's very tactile doing this so it's quite a pleasurable experience making the felt nice and soft. Just checking again the fibres are all holding together. It's doing really well. I'm moving my table here, pushing it back a little bit. And sitting down because you can get quite a bit of backache when you're doing this. I've actually got my table raised on, on four blocks to make sure it's at the right height but sometimes I do sit down to do the work. Um, and do look after your back while you're doing this. Um, try and stand up as straight as you can. I thought I'd give a try with my, my rough textured gloves just to give it a final firming but you'll see I stop pretty quickly as I realise it's catching on the wall because it's firm enough already um, and they're much better using those um, sort of fibre gloves for when you're making cords, when you're rolling a cord um, and you're trying to make the cord for a handbag they, they've got texture on them um, and they help um, form the wool together but I didn't need it for this I realise that the wool is already 
very firm. I'm just giving it a final rub with the last bit of soap. And now we've reached the rolling stage. Um, so I've covered the work with a piece of net and I'm rolling around an old icing um, roller or you could use a, a pool noodle, um, anything that's quite firm. And I'm going to roll that. The, the bubble wrap bubbles are upper side into the wool and then they gorse over the top. Um, and I'm just going to keep rolling that. Um, now the hard work comes. You have to continue rolling this and I would suggest at least 200 times, <laughs> which might seem a lot, but actually you might even have to do it another 200 times because you're going to check it afterwards and you're going to see how tight it is and how firm the felt feels. Also the size, because you do want it to shrink in. Um, so you're going to, you originally started off with about 50-50 square and you're going to want to lose about 20% of that, come down to about 42 by 42. Um, this is so that the wool shrinks on itself, firms up and is much more um, integrally solid and will, will hold together. Um, so you see I'm here taking away the roller. I'm going to then roll it from the other direction. Um, the reason we do this, the wool shrinks in the direction of the roll. So if you continue to roll in one direction, you won't have a circle. You're going to have a very long oval. Um, so you have to keep moving your roller around and doing it in different directions. The same for a rectangle or a square. Um, always keep turning your wool, your, um, wool project, perhaps a quarter of the project at a time, so that you can keep rolling it. So I sort of do 25 to, to 40 rolls and then move it around and then do another 25 to 40 rolls. Um, you don't have to be big rolls. Um, you're just rolling the, the breadth of your hand and back. Um, some people stretch out and roll a huge long roll and pull it all the way back to their chest. I find short rolls like this work equally as well. You're really just, um, again, you know, agitating the wool to shrink in on itself, um, encouraging the fibres to gel together. Um, this is going to take a little while. Um, I'm not going to speed it up, I don't think, because I want you to see that see the process um, and to realise what you need to do. Sometimes when you unravel it, you'll find you end up with the um, gauze uppermost or you'll end up with the work downwards because you've unravelled it in the opposite direction. So you just pull it away, turn it over. If it falls down off the, the bubble wrap now, the wall project is, is completely one piece of material, so it, it's not going to fall apart on you. Um, and just lay it back out over your bubble wrap again. Um, and look at where you are in size. Once you lost about 15 to 20 percent, then you probably should should find that it's reasonably tight, um, and just check that it's not coming apart. Some projects you'll want to um, shrink further than that, depending on what you're doing. But for something like this, it doesn't need to uh, shrink massively. Just covering it over again, I'm going to roll it from the other direction. I don't wrap mine in a towel when I'm doing this because I don't find my hands slip, but a lot of people will then cover that rolling pin in a towel and put some elastic bands in the end so that the work doesn't slip. I don't find it, it moves very much. Um, I think it depends on the project and, and the, the process that you that you do. Um, I'm not one for wasting time doing stages that I don't need to. I'm afraid I've got uh, less patience than some. So I'm rolling it now again. Another 20 odd rolls. And then I'll move it around. Just going to unroll it and keep looking at it and seeing how it's doing. By measuring, you do get a feeling of, of how quickly it's pulling together. Um, it's a good good way to work out your progress. Certainly if you do a very small sample before you start, 
can you can work out what how quickly something um, shrinks because different walls will shrink to different um, sizes at different speeds so you know felting is a journey where you learn and learn and learn um, and by no means this this one video is 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 a be all and uh, show you everything you do have to look good way to do it i find is get one or two decent books which show you how to to do the process so you can look at them and go along at a slow pace um, and certainly one one i would recommend if you can afford it is one called Uniquely Felt. Um, it's by Christine White. Um, it's not a cheap book. Usually retails at about $25. Um, and it's by Story. So www.story, S-T-O-R-E-Y.com. And if you do that, Uniquely Felt, it's got loads and loads of techniques um, for felting. Um, it's a fantastic book. Lots of wonderful colour pictures. Um, and it also shows you some needle felting, um, quite a lot of wet felting, Nuno felting. Um, it's got the whole gambit and it shows you how to make jewellery, items of clothing, pictures. It's a fantastic book and I will write the details below the uh, video for you. It's definitely worth a purchase or a, a Christmas present or a birthday present. This is probably going to be one last roll here. Um, I think I'm almost at the, the end of this. Difficult is when you're voiceovering a, a video, you can't get to the end of it to see how far you've got. I mean, it probably is a method, but I'm not used to the uh, video editing software that well. <laughs> still learning, still learning. <laughs> At the end of this, um, one of the best ways then to um, finalise your felt is to rinse it in cold water and then shock rinse it in hot water and then cold water again and then hot water again. Get rid of all the soap and then you need to make a small bowl of warm water um, with just a couple of teaspoons, uh, tablespoons rather, of white vinegar and soak the um, piece of work for about 10 minutes, wring it out um, and then give it one final last um, warm water rinse after that and that will have restored the wool's pH to a reasonable balance, the vinegar will do this and you'll have got rid of all the soap because if you leave soap in it and you dry it and then eventually it will rot um, so you must make sure that you've rinsed out all the soap at the end of the um, process. That one final I've just turned it over to give it another final roll as you can see quite a lot of rolling involved um, it's not a quick process um, this final sort of fulling stage as, as it's called um, it's important to um, to finish the felt properly otherwise you find it won't wear very well and when you're using it not not as if this is a wearable jacket or a, or a top or anything um, but even as a placemat you want it to be quite hardy and to be able to take a little bit of bashing you don't want it to bubble up and all the bits of wool um, fleck and bubble um, so the, the tighter you get the the fulling process and the the shrinking down then you'll find that you make your piece last a, a lot longer um, you can see a lovely picture on the right hand side there of what it's like when it's finished that's when it's finished when it's wet obviously it will shine a lot more when it's dry um, Let 
every time I think I've finished, I notice I did another lot of rolling. <laughs> Seems to go on forever. At this point, even I've lost patience, so I've speeded up the video a little bit. And as you can see, I've done a final few more rolls. So there's quite a lot of rolling. I'm feeling the width again, checking the measurements. Um, and eventually, really the only last lot of rolling is because I'm finding it's a little bit oval in shape. So I'm rolling it really to shrink it back into a circular shape. Remember, it shrinks in the direction of rolling. So... If, you're, if it's oval, you want to roll in the direction of the longest end and that will pull the work into it and shrink it, shrink it down. There we are, a piece in all its final glory. I hope you've enjoyed this video and if so, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much. Any questions, please let me know.